Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about ALS and communicative technology. But first, let's meet Fred and Evelyn. Fred and Evelyn have been married for 25 years. Fred was diagnosed with ALS two years ago and Evelyn is his primary caretaker. Recently, Fred has been experiencing communication difficulties as his movement is limited and his speech has been increasingly difficult to understand. Both Fred and Evelyn have been worried about their ability to communicate with one another and Fred's quality of life as the disease progresses. Before we consider both Fred and Evelyn's needs, let's go over ALS and the disease process. What is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis? Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS for short, is a neurodegenerative disease that causes loss of motor neurons, resulting in atrophic muscle changes. Onset occurs during the fifth or sixth decade of life and affects more men than women. Risk factors include smoking and aluminum. There are approximately 2,500 to 3,000 Canadians living with ALS. There are two types of ALS, sporadic or familial type. Sporadic ALS occurs in 90 to 95% of cases with no identifiable cause. In familial type ALS, there's a genetic dominant inheritance factor. This type of ALS occurs in 5 to 10% of cases. Let's go over the clinical manifestations of ALS. Muscle weakness occurs gradually and is the most common symptom. The patient also experiences symptoms such as fatigue, muscle cramps, twitching, and incoordination, which often result in tripping and falls. Muscle atrophy occurs in the muscles of the arms, trunk, and legs. This interferes with range of motion and the ability to complete activities of daily living. Shortness of breath and dysphagia also occur. The patient experiences difficulties with speech and this worsens as the disease progresses. Death is typically the result of respiratory failure, infection, or aspiration. Depending on the time of diagnosis, life expectancy for patients with ALS is five years. No specific treatments exist for ALS and treatment is generally supportive. Treatment and nursing management focuses on improving and maintaining quality of life, well-being, and function. An important factor to consider in the management of ALS is communication. As the disease progresses, the ability to communicate is reduced. As time goes on, the voice in is increasingly nasal sounding and articulation becomes difficult, making speech unintelligible. This is due to phonetary impairments related to the loss of tongue muscle function, eventually causing the inability to speak. As a person's voluntary movement becomes more limited, other forms of physical communication are also lost. However, eye movement is preserved in patients with ALS. It is also important to note that most patients do not experience any cognitive decline throughout the disease course. Communication difficulties are a major stressor for both Fred and Evelyn. The inability to converse with his wife and friends has made Fred feel sad and frustrated. Fred is concerned about the future and the burden his illness places on his wife. Individuals diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's encounter the greatest challenges when it comes to communication. Brownlee and Marissa 2007 suggest that 75% of individuals with ALS will require some form of communicative assistance. Many of these individuals present with these speech disorders as a result of disturbed muscle control due to peripheral or central nervous system damage, muscle weakness or paralysis, or abnormal muscle movements. In order to improve verbal communication amongst these individuals, the use of augmentative slash alternative communication strategies such as eye tracking technology is often used. Augmentative communication devices are often used in individuals who still have their speech but have limited abilities to use it, whereas alternative communication devices are implemented for individuals who have lost all of their speech. Without the use of these communication devices, the individual's care needs are often misinterpreted or compromised. Therefore, it is imperative that nurses and other healthcare providers explore AAC intervention strategies as soon as change in speech is detected. Technology such as eye gazing communication devices has been developed to assist people with ALS to communicate. Before we discuss how this will help Fred and other patients with ALS, Let's go over what eye gazing communication technology is. 
Eye tracking communication devices are often used in the later stages of ALS when the ability to speak is compromised. ETCDs sense and interpret eye movements using the infrared camera and is dependent on the person's ability to point and hold their gaze. This technology gives people with ALS a voice, allows them to navigate computer programs giving them access to reading and news material, and consequently permits them to partake in social, educational, recreational, and business activities. ETCDs allow people with ALS to participate in social activities, make personal and health-related decisions, and increases their independence and ability to fill roles. This is what the technology looks like. Instead of a mouse, screens are navigated by the point and hold of one's gaze. It's no surprise that individuals who lack the ability to speak on their own frequently feel frustrated, saddened, isolated, and scared. Augmentative alternative communication devices can maintain relationships through internet connections and allow the affected individual to feel in control of their independence, self-esteem, and well-being. In order to meet the criteria to receive an AAC device, such as the eye tracking technology, the individual must meet with the healthcare professionals, such as occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, social workers, rehab assistants, etc. Successful candidates often rely on physical status, cognitive status, language ability, willingness to learn, and user environment when it comes to deciding which AAC device to use. Because of the progressive nature of ALS, the main determinant includes successfully reaching the individual's goals. Currently, Fred is dependent on Evelyn to access his emails and complete other computer-related tasks. An eye-tracking communication device would allow Fred to work independently without the help of his wife. Now, let's consider the relevance to informatics. The eye tracking system allows the individual to move the cursor on the computer through eye movement. This technology is one of the easiest and most beneficial AAC devices to use as the eye muscles tend not to fatigue in ALS individuals, thus maintaining the individual's energy levels. Additionally, this device is used because eye movement is one of the only movements that individuals continuously exhibit over time, regardless of invasive treatment use. Besides generating speech, eye gazing communication devices come with additional features that promote the independence of its users. Eye gaze devices can be connected with a smartphone, allowing the user to text or call friends and family, and even make medical appointments. This technology can be connected with applications and programs. Additionally, certain eye gaze technologies can be connected with smart devices within the home, so light switches, sound systems, and television can be turned on and off, giving the user more control of their environment. Many benefits are linked to the use of eye tracking devices amongst ALS diagnosed individuals. Some of these benefits include improving communication, increasing participation amongst family and social life, and ultimately improving quality of life. In fact, 93% of individuals who used this device reported successful implementation and outcomes. Fred and Evelyn know that eye tracking communication technology would improve Fred's quality of life and allow him to continue to make health-related decisions as his disease progresses. The next step is navigating the referral process. The referral process for eye gazing technology in Ontario will begin with the patient meeting with their most responsible physician or ALS neurologist who would send a referral to the or the device. This company will reach out to the patient and set up a consultation. After the consultation, this eye gazing device would be individualized to the needs and preferences. Getting coverage for the eye gazing device. It is difficult to determine a price range for this technology as it would vary depending on what brand and if there are any specific add-ons to the eye tracking system. Here are a few ways to get coverage for the system. Through the ALS Canada Equipment Program, they provide loan equipment programs, funding assistance programs for leased and rented equipment. Certain insurance packages may include limited funding as well. 
as private insurances may also include some funding for this type of eye-gazing technology. And the specific companies that sell these systems also have their own funding and coverage options. So again, that will vary depending on what the company and program that the patient chooses to go with. Now that we have an idea of what ALS and eye-gazing communication technologies are, let's talk about the related nursing implications. It is a common occurrence for nurses to be part of the care circle for people with ALS. There are many complications that are associated with late stages of ALS that would require extra assistance. As noted earlier, verbal communication is one complication that arises as the person loses function of their vocal cords and or their ability to breathe. This makes communication about health-related concerns somewhat of a difficult task. This is problematic because good communication between the nurse and his or her patient is essential for patient-centered care. Poor communication is a significant financial burden for the healthcare industry, and it can lead to poor medication adherence, repeat visits to clinics and hospitals, and can diminish the nurse-patient therapeutic relationship. Not to mention, a lack of communication can cause a significant amount of harm to either the nurse or the patient. Effective communication, on the other hand, can lead to enhanced patient experience, reduced complaints, and can even increase the nurse's self-confidence, professional standing, and job satisfaction. In turn, this also gives the patient a sense of confidence knowing that the nurse understands their needs, which results in the patient being more likely to follow treatment regimens and follow or take advice. The introduction of eye tracking technology has the ability to fix this barrier to effective communication. This, in turn, results in an overall better outcome for the nurse and the patient. With that being said, it is important that the nurse is familiar with the eye tracking technology. The nurse should be able to assist the patient in learning about eye tracking and provide a discussion about the benefits and possible downfalls to the use of this technology. Though the nurse should be familiar with the technology itself, it is likely the patient will receive instructions and demonstrations from a trained professional from the company providing the technology. As well, it is important to involve family members in this information session. It is likely that family members will have questions about how the device works and how they can better interact with their loved one. Having this information also requires the nurse then to advocate for such technologies when it may benefit benefit his or her patient. This requires the nurse to use his or her critical thinking skills to evaluate his or her patient's situation. If the nurse feels as though this technology would benefit his or her patient, he or she may refer the patient directly to the company's website and or notify the primary physician overlooking the patient. The physician may then write a prescription for the device, which allows for its coverage through OHIP. For someone with ALS, one of the nursing diagnoses may be impaired verbal communication related to ALS progression as evident by trouble communicating. One of the ways to resolve this nursing diagnosis would be through the use of eye tracking devices. This device, as stated above, would allow the patient to better communicate with the healthcare team. Some expected outcomes may be improved satisfaction with care, strengthened nurse-patient relationship, Patient is comfortable with the use of technology. Family is better able to interact with loved one. And patient feels as though their health-related concerns are met. Another relevant nursing diagnosis would be powerlessness related to ALS progression and inability to verbally communicate as evident by signs of depression and lack of involvement in care. This nursing diagnosis may be resolved by the introduction of eye tracking technology because it gives the patient back their ability to verbally communicate. This will improve the patient's feelings of powerlessness because they gain back a sense of control within their life and their health care. Some expected outcomes may be patient will feel less depressed and more happiness, patient will engage more with health care provider, and patient will feel comfortable stating what they need from their care services. And so, the introduction of eye tracking technology for those with advanced ALS has great potential to improve overall care. Brad now has an eye tracking device of his own. This technology has allowed him to regain a sense of control over his life that he thought he would never get back. Although ALS has taken away his ability to move and talk, it has not taken away his personality or his sense of humor. 
Fred now has the ability to tell his nurse and healthcare providers when he is feeling unwell and knows together they can collaborate to form a plan of care that meets his needs. In conclusion, eye tracking communication devices offer an alternative means of communication for individuals with speech and mobility issues. Regardless of age or condition, communication has a huge impact on quality of life. The invention of eye tracking communication devices has the potential to increase the independence of those suffering from neurological and degenerative conditions. Please comment below anything you found interesting about the presentation and or answer one or two of the following questions. Why is eye gazing technology beneficial for someone with ALS? What can be done to make the eye tracking device more accessible for patients with ALS? What improvements can be made towards the eye tracking system? What is the difference between augmentative communication devices and alternative communication devices? Can you think of any additional nursing implications not mentioned in the video that are relevant to providing care to patients with ALS? Please check out our patient handout on ALS and eye tracking communication technology linked on the discussion board below.